Hello, I'm Dr. Alexandre Amato, a vascular surgeon at the Amato Institute. And considering Lipedema Awareness Month, Lipedema June, I'm going to talk here about Lipedema, which is an invisible disease that affects 12 million women in Brazil and many don't even know it's happening. I've already made several videos about lipedema on the channel but I'm remembering that they are quite old because I've been talking about this subject for a long time. And I think it's worth updating with new concepts given that most of the lipedema publications were published in the last five years. What do I mean by this? That in the last five years we published more scientific work than all the previous decades combined. So there's a lot of new information, many serious researchers around the world studying this to bring a solution for you. Do you think you have lipedema? Know someone with lipedema? with thick legs or think the obesity is in the legs, write down in the comments I want to know. But for that person you will grab this link up there and send it to them so they can understand what's going on because in this video I will talk about the general aspects of lipedema. Lipedema is then a disease of fat in the legs but it's not that simple. It's a disease where there is a change in metabolism in general throughout the entire body and this fat deposition in the legs ends up being your body's response to a much larger metabolic problem which is chronic low-grade inflammation but what shows up is the fat deposition so many people end up believing that the problem is the fat no the fat deposition is a consequence of the problem which is inflammation so how does this problem appear? It appears with the deposition of fam in the lower limbs, it can happen in the upper limbs too. Most of the time it happens symmetrically, so the right leg will be similar to the left leg. It might be a little more, a little less, but usually it's similar. This fat becomes inflamed, so there will be a sensation of pain, heaviness and fatigue. Frequent bruising on the legs, those bruises that appear without you knowing where they came from. The feeling of swelling is very significant. Many times women with lipedema say they have fluid retention in their legs and this fluid retention is actually the inflammation causing that sensation. Lipedema is a chronic progressive disease but when you look at that image of the stages of lipedema, it doesn't mean that everyone with lipedema will reach the final stage, but those who are in the final stage have gone through the previous stages. By the way, the final stage is a rare situation where lipedema is associated with lymphedema, which indeed involves fluid retention in the extracellular space. Now, if there is no conservative treatment, if there is no control of this inflammation in the woman's body, there will be a progression of this disease to later stages. I am proud to say that we conducted the first prevalent study of lipedema in Brazil and we found that 12.3% of women show signs of lipedema in Brazil. That amounts to over 12 million women. That's a lot of people but not that many are seeking treatment or are concerned or have such severe symptoms that they are seeking help. So what does that mean? It means that many people have lipedema with few symptoms because the disease is controlled, because they have healthy lifestyle habits, because they remove the inflammatory trigger, because they are doing everything right. And there's a small portion that does have very high symptoms and they are actively seeking help. And often they go to various doctors and no one ends up diagnosing it because it's an underdiagnosed disease. Why? Because it's not taught in medical schools. So since the complaints occur in the lower limbs and the vascular surgeon is considered, the leg specialist, the one who resolves leg swelling, many times these women are seeking help from the vascular surgeon. But since they often also have varicose veins, the varicose veins are easily seen. The vascular surgeon might look at the varicose veins and end up blaming the swelling on the varicose veins might end up treating the varicose veins and then there's no significant improvement in the pi swelling. This is the frequent story. Taiki, it might not be yours. Tell me below what your story is, how you discovered lipedema. I want to know but 
it's a really common story. Lipedema is caused by a, a genetic issue. Since it's a very common disease, it's believed to be not just one gene, but rather polygenic. There are multiple genes, so you inherit this problem from someone in your family. It could be from the father or the mother. The father obviously won't have lipedema, but some woman in his family might but it's also a disease extremely related to hormones. So the initial trigger, the moment when the first symptoms appear, can be puberty, it can be pregnancy, or it can be menopause, when there are major hormonal changes in a woman's body. Estrogen is indeed correlated with the onset of symptoms in lipedema, but it is not the only trigger. There are other triggers such as certain medications, some inflammatory crises from other diseases, some autoimmune diseases and even diet. So I've already mentioned the symptoms of lipedema and I also wanted to remind you about the sensitivity of the skin. Some say they don't have pain but they do have pain or sensitivity when pressed. I've heard here in the office that when the cat climbs on their lap it hurts, the cat's paw hurts or when the husband touches them it hurts or when a child sits on their lap it hurts. These are real and frequent reports here in the office but another common report is the aesthetic complaint about the appearance of the skin Many complain about so-called cellulite. Oh, I have a lot of cellulite. Actually, in their case, the cellulite is the inflammation that's happening. The inflammation occurs and there's a retraction of that fat due to an inflammatory issue. And many times they seek aesthetic treatments and most aesthetic treatments end up increasing this inflammation because by increasing the inflammation, the fat becomes tense. And in this tension, in this inflammation of the fat, this fat never improves, it only gets worse. You can't lose inflamed fat and you can't gain muscle mass. Lipedema, depending on its location, for example, on the inner thighs, the inside of the legs or the knee, can significantly limit movement, making it hard to exercise, difficult to walk or climb stairs. Especially in the more advanced stages of the disease, it has a huge impact on quality of life. But not only that, as I mentioned, there are psychological aspects related to lipedema. There's anxiety, stress, and there's the anti-obesity bias. So our society tends to create a problem around obesity, even though lipedema is not obesity. It's a different kind that. of fat. It's a fat that the fat in reduces obesity is risk. visceral fat. It's but the even fat though that it reduces cardiovascular that risk, chronic diseases like and diabetes, it the Alzheimer's, same Alzheimer's, hypertension, oh, strokes, and DVA, then there's atherosclerosis. Well, I just mentioned the anti-obesity visceral bias. fat. The person lipedema struggles to find a doctor who can help because everyone will say. Oh, Far from it's it, obesity. It's a metabolic it's problem that needs help. Fault. So there's discrimination, there's a lack of understanding of the problem, and there's the issue of blame. So if you think it's obesity and end up pointing fingers, saying it's your fault because you ate too much, but in reality, many don't even don't eat too much. Some do. And then there's associated obesity, but sometimes they don't eat too much and are constantly inflamed. The problem is inflammation and then the body now goes into a state of uh, protection. Yeah, I'm inflamed. I need to store energy for the war that's coming and then you can't lose that fat if you don't know what's happening. Simply pointing fingers and saying you're eating in secret or doing something you're not telling me about that doesn't solve the problem. We need to understand what's happening to truly help the patient and often those with lipedema have already made several attempts to treat obesity and realized that it doesn't work for lipedema. So they dieted, did a lot of physical exercise and then see their friends doing this lose weight, get well, 
then they try again. Then they see it's incredibly hard to lose the volume in their legs. And one day they give up. They say, oh man, but I like to eat. I don't like to exercise. When I do, I get no results. So you know what? I'm done, brother. I'm going to eat well and stop exercising. And then comes obesity. On top of the lipedema problem, some people still think that lipedema and obesity are the same thing, but obesity doesn't hurt, obesity doesn't cause leg pain, obesity doesn't cause swelling, obesity doesn't cause bruising on the legs. They are clearly different problems and diagnosing lipedema is also an issue. I am proud to say that we also created the world's first protocol for diagnosing lipedema using ultrasound. It's published and used worldwide. Despite this, ultrasound isn't mandatory for diagnosing lipedema because the diagnosis is clinical, it's through conversation, it's through anamnesis, through physical examination. Understanding the patient's problem, we can make the diagnosis. It's important to evaluate the leg, palpate, feel to see if there's a depression when pressed or not, if there's pain or not, the consistency of the skin. Many patients with lipedema have softer skin. So, have you noticed any difference in the consistency of your skin? Write it down in the comments below, I want to know. But the problem is also the lack of knowledge among most doctors. If they don't know the problem exists, they can't make the diagnosis. Since it's not taught in medical schools, only those who for some reason studied the topic outside the curriculum will know. So it's very common for women to go from doctor to doctor. I have a patient who has seen 13 vascular surgeons and other specialists and none mentioned the possibility of lipedema. In this case, she was the one who made the self-diagnosis. So self-diagnosis is indeed an option. We have a standardized questionnaire available and I can share the link below for you to complete it. This questionnaire can provide you with the likelihood of having lipedema. It's important to note that while it can't offer a diagnosis, only a doctor can do that, it can indicate whether you have a high or low probability. As for lipedema treatment, let me elaborate on treatments in medicine generally. In cases where a disease has only one treatment, it typically signifies that the treatment is effective and resolves all instances. When a disease has a lot of treatments available, it's because none of them are perfect or none of them will always be suitable for all cases or each case will improve with a different treatment. Lipedema has many treatments available, but I consider that the treatment is just one. The treatment is an association of, of various procedures and therapies. You might even see some of my older videos where I separated the treatment into conservative clinical treatment and surgical treatment. Today I don't do that anymore, right? After all, lipedema has evolved a lot. The surgical treatment, it's, it's just one tool within the treatment and the treatment involves managing inflammation and what's available, there's physiotherapy with manual lymphatic drainage, there's elastocompression, it's very difficult to use the compression stocking. There are more suitable pants, I can put a link below if you're interested. A proper diet, tracking the inflammatory trigger, treating that inflammatory trigger medically, the right physical exercise that reduces inflammation, and when everything is under control and you still think surgery is needed, then surgery can be the cherry on top. It's extremely rare for surgery to be needed at the beginning, but that's when there's an inability to move. The lipedema is blocking movement. I'll give you an example. I had a patient who had two lumps in the middle of her thigh and she couldn't walk or exercise because the lumps would bump and hurt. So we had to do the surgery for her to get back to doing physical exercise and walking. I thought she would come back later for the aesthetic treatment of lipedema to do a surgery, not just to regain mobility, but she ended up coming back 
to do the aesthetic surgery for varicose veins, which was what really bothered her. So just to see that after we removed the lipedema problem, she was happy with the aesthetic result of the fat and then wanted to treat the varicose veins. So since lipedema is an underdiagnosed disease, few people know about it. Recently, the few who end up publishing about it are self-proclaimed experts on this subject since last week. We need to spread quality information, information based on scientific work, dense information about lipedema, all this to raise awareness not only among the general public but also among e doctors and health professionals. So do your part, grab the link up there, send it to that family member who is a health professional, send it to that acquaintance who might also have lipedema, let's spread this information so that everyone understands that lipedema exists, is very common and can be a shadow in the lives of many women. Rest assured that lipedema is not a death sentence. It is not a catastrophe. Lipedema is perfectly manageable, controllable and you can have a very good quality of life. Most women with lipedema and who don't have other significant comorbidities will live very well, will live a long life, will probably outlive everyone around them because the fat from lipedema is a type of fat that reduces cardiovascular risk and statistically speaking, cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death worldwide. So to all the lipedema warriors, everyone who is fighting to improve their symptoms, know that I have a lot of videos and information here on how to achieve this goal. Watch our playlist on lipedema and subscribe to our channel below as we are always releasing new videos to improve the quality of life for you and your family. Take advantage, click the bell and stay tuned because I'm going to put the next best video for you to watch.